Last week, thousands marched in Tel Aviv, Israel, to mark International Human Rights Day. But there are stark differences for those who protest in the West Bank, where demonstrations are restricted and people are often injured and sometimes killed by the Israeli military, as was the case last weekend. The Real News Network's Leah Tarachansky reports. The march was organized to protest a wave of laws. Right-wing and religious parties are currently passing through parliament. The Association for Civil Rights in Israel called this collection of laws anti-democratic. Libby Lenkinski is their director of international relations. And by anti-democratic, we're basically looking at four categories of legislative initiatives that are coming up at various speeds and with various fervor um, in our Knesset. The first is um, a whole slew of legislation aimed at limiting the rights of the Arab minority in Israel. And these are a spate of legislation that call into question various things like loyalty. The second trend that we see um, are a group of legislation, legislative bills and now some laws, which aim to limit um, the ability for civil society to operate, specifically targeting human rights NGOs and political NGOs that don't um, tote the party line, as it were. The third re-arising um, trend are a group of initiatives aimed at the High Court of Justice. And then the fourth is uh, direct freedom of expression limitations, um, both aimed at the press and again at civil society. So things like the mo most recent amendment to the libel law. And for us, the most worrying thing about some of these trends is that they create a serious chilling effect in preparation for Human Rights Day, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu recorded a special address, claiming Israel is a model of human rights in the region. Specifically, Netanyahu outlined the right to protest, comparing the social justice movement of the summer to the Arab Spring. We're proud to be a country that is governed by laws, not men, where protests in town squares is a way of life. It's not a sign of revolution. People go to the squares, they give voice to whatever protests and grievances they have. They do it on the internet, they do it in the newspapers, they do it on television, they do it in our parliament, the Knesset, in a, in a robust, dynamic and free way that is a, an example for the entire democratic world. While the Human Rights March was held in Tel Aviv, an hour away in the West Bank, dozens of Palestinian villages were holding their weekly nonviolent demonstrations. In Abi Saleh, the protest ended when three demonstrators sustained serious injuries. Mustafa Tamimi is a 28-year-old resident of the village. He was shot at close range with a high-velocity tear gas canister by a soldier from a military jeep. The army then delayed the ambulance and Tamimi died from his injuries the next day. According to the Israeli human rights guru B'Tselem, he is the 20th protester since 2004 to be killed by Israeli soldiers in such protests. It's important when talking about the freedoms that the J14 movement um, experienced throughout the summer to point out that at that same time and for years before this and continuously until today, um, Palestinians in the West Bank are not given that same right to protest. Palestinians living in the West Bank um, are subject to uh, Israeli military law. They're not tried in the same legal system as Israelis, the civilian courts um, inside Israel. Military Order 101 um, creates a situation or states fully that any gathering of Palestinians for, of above 10 people, 10 people or more, needs to require a special permit, needs to obtain a special permit from the occupying power, from the Israeli authorities. The backdrop of those protests is that Palestinians are protesting against the occupation. They are not going to require, they're not going to request a permit from the occupier in order to do those protests. So ostensibly Military Order 101 creates a situation in which every protest in the occupied territories of Palestinians is illegal. Military Order 101 forbids displaying the Palestinian flag, printing of political posters, and bans the gathering of more than 10 people for a political purpose or for a matter that may be construed as political. Often people's freedom of movement are, is limited as a means for uh, blocking protests from occurring. We see a lot of misuse of weapons, um, for example, shooting projectile tear gas canisters um, directly at protesters instead of in an arc fashion, which is how they're meant to be used. And then another topic is a, is a whole system of arrests, both that take place during the protests where you know whoever is standing near the soldiers could potentially be arrested and you know 
often it's youth um, that are involved in stone throwing or other parts of the protest, but also um, night arrests that happen during villages uh, during during the night in various Palestinian villages where is Israeli military or security forces will go into a village and arrest people that are suspected of being part of protests. So you can see direct campaigns in particular villages um, of arresting the protest leaders. The difference between the Israeli and Palestinian right to protest was especially evident during the summer social justice movement, known as the July 14th or the Israeli summer. <laughs> While many were arrested, not a single protest was met with tear gas, stun grenades, rubber or live ammunition, as is common in the West Bank. Even during Mustafa Tamimi's funeral on Sunday, the army again invaded the village and showered the mourners with tear gas and skunk, a fluid that smells like sewage and is shot from a water cannon truck. Three people were injured and eight arrested. For The Real News, I'm Leah Tarachansky in Tel Aviv.